DAV is just, it's a uniquely competent team of people and it's a humble approach to the problem. They've picked out a niche that's not the hardcore, uh, the hardcore development of the vehicle technology, but specializing the communications technology and the crypto economics of that. But I can say this, this is obviously a great crew of people, an interesting project, and good things are going to come of it over time. I actually started out uh, to be a physicist as an undergraduate, and then I discovered how hard math was, and I wound up taking psychology and computer science classes, which I was both really good at. And when I finished that, decided academia was just not the career for me. Just kept uh, advancing my career in uh, programming and computer science. Just did a lot of different work from then. Information retrieval, database kernels, virtual machines. And when I got pulled into the Ethereum work, um, found myself mainly working on the virtual machine. That was where my skills seemed most useful and that's what was most interesting to me. What distinguishes Ethereum from Bitcoin, say, is that not only is there value on the blockchain, some sort of money, um, or uh, digital curiosities, one economist calls it. Rather than just money on the blockchain, the Ethereum blockchain has little programs that we call smart contracts. And that's gonna be really important for DAV because it's the smart contracts that let DAV tokens serve um, as a communication medium between the autonomous vehicles on the network. Um, without the smart contracts, um, you wouldn't be able to communicate value, uh, communicate everything that needs to be communicated to let these vehicles operate together on the network. And so I think my specific experience with the virtual machine is coming in handy, and just my longer experience uh, when John Frazier uh, went to bring me aboard. Yeah, he just said, you're a, you're a generalist and those are hard to find. That vision has got to be different in different places. Yeah, I live, I live out here in the rural U.S. Yeah, um, where an awful lot of roads aren't properly mapped. Yeah, conditions are constantly changing. When I'm driving through a complete whiteout, in the winter time, I would very much like to have some lidar telling me uh, <laughs> whether whether there's anything still in front of me in that in that snow. In more uh, civilized places, you know, I can see that these vehicles will start to, over time, be able to take over more of the tasks uh, that humans are doing on um, carefully worked out. Um, freeway systems, you can see autonomous uh, convoys of trucks that they're talking about working out. It's clearly going to vary so much by location and need. And I think DAV is set up to operate across a pretty large scale there. So that's a good thing. Yeah, you're asking about collaboration and that's I mean, it's going to be essential, that, especially for where DAV is positioning itself. You know, um, we're not setting up as one car company in competition with a lot of other car companies, you know, or one drone company in competition with other drone companies. We're going to be doing communications, and that's going to work best to the extent that different providers of vehicles um, are going to join into our network and communicate with each other. Um, so yeah, that's, that's essential and I think that's part of our plan.
you know, sticking with things like drones that aren't so dangerous to people and sticking with simpler tasks like, you know, last mile deliveries rather than uh, replacing taxi drivers. We can make it happen and then the obstacles become more, you know, you know a successful token sale, you know, putting the right team together, the software for the communication, uh, more, more ordinary problems that I think we know how to solve. Yeah, and that we have the, uh, the sort of team we need to solve them.